My talk this time is a look back at the 10-year retrospective of VIEW because VIEW was released in February 2014, so it's been over 10 years now. The talk essentially talks through some of the achievements that we made, look back at the journey of me getting into full-time, going through the ups and downs of developing VIEW, and talks about what makes VIEW successful today, which I believe is the community and our collaborative mindset where the ecosystem give rise to a lot of projects that benefits the wider ecosystem rather than just VIEW itself. So that's the gist of the talk. The idea of 3 yes is to bring the VIEW community a way of creating 3D scenes declaratively and easy. So the 3D world is really intimidating and we try to make it easy for VIEW community to work on it. We have some use cases for scroll detailing and 3D configuration, so you can start. Prime is all about components. We have more than 90 open source UI components. We have the blocks and the templates and many other things. So it's the most complete UI library, most comprehensive one. And the main difference between uh, uh, the other members of the ecosystem and the UI landscape is that it's kind of unopinionated. We have the stealth mode and unstealth mode. Stealth mode is the traditional UI library. Unstealth mode is something that gives you full freedom. And if you couple with a CSS library of your choice like Tailwind, you will be able to implement whatever you need using this approach. So whichever path you take, Primeview provides something out of the box for you. The main thing I'd say is the importance of a flourishing ecosystem. So Next would be nothing if it weren't for the modules and integrations and providers that people build. And that's what I'm excited about. Pina is not the only place to store global state. And Pina shouldn't be your first option even to store a global state. The way I like to see it is not to think of Pina as a global state solution, but more of a singleton composable solution. So in Vue, you write a lot of composables. Uh, you use them inside components. Uh, they create some state every time. And with Pina, you're able to create a composable that only runs or instantiate everything inside once. And that's what we call a store as well. I think the takeaway from my talk is that Astro isn't just for static applications anymore. We also have server-side rendering and we're really getting good at full applications, either that being an SPA or an MPA with view transitions or anything. Especially with Astro Studio, I think we'll change the narrative a little bit there. So I think you should give Astro another try and we're not just for static apps anymore. The essence of my talk, which is really about basically view server and e-commerce and how to do headless commerce right, is that there are so many things that could go wrong. And, you know, it is true for all of the applications, but there is a specific subset of things that could actually go wrong within e-commerce applications, which are mainly related to data. So when you have an e-commerce application, it is usually very data heavy. The probably worst thing you can do is keeping this data on the front end in a separate front layer. You can do it in many ways. Another one is making the caching right. Like there is a lot of session specific data, which is usually preventing those pages from being properly cached. And the third thing is that it always has to be SEO friendly, which is also often a problem. The main takeaway from my talk is that you should be excited about mobile. You should be excited about Tori and native script. But if you want to build in prod right now, you should use a web view based solution like capacitor, which has been around for over 10 years at this point. And I'm really excited to see what comes out in the next year, especially from Tori, who I think is going to target even more devices than just desktop and mobile. So the main point of my talk was to show how Nux Island works. Also, first by starting what Nux Island is, because there's actually two ways of using items in Nux with Nux Island component and the server components. And the biggest point, I think, would be probably my last slides. So it's like more like an anti-hype slide. I know that some people after the talk will want to try it and use it everywhere. And that's not the point of Nux Island. It's very specific. It's not meant to be used anywhere in your application for everything that is non-interactive. That was the biggest point in my talk. What I would want anybody to take away from my talk is that forms are fundamentally not solved in HTML and JavaScript the way that they should be. And we need some additional tooling. And that's the fundamental reason that forms are so hard. We all know forms are hard. They don't get easier the number of tools we put on top of it. And so there's a fundamental solution to that. So the main takeaway to take from my talk will be that with Next 3, you can create full stack application using a database, a gateway service, uploading file, 
and that you can upload, you can deploy it on a serverless platform on the edge for free. So in my talk, I talked about how I can bring AI on the whole website, on the whole product. And I chose to use TipTip as a rich text editor, which is headless, which I think is bringing a lot of power to actually implement this AI extension. So what I found out is that writing the JavaScript and writing the view extension was the simple part, the hard part actually was the prompt engineering to find out how to exactly write down my prompts so the users would actually get the results that they are looking for.